I don't do opening addresses very much. I normally am flicking slides and talking about things, so uh, it's, it's uh, slightly different for me. Um, the thing that's been said to me most frequently since I came in this morning is, uh, why aren't you in Italy? Okay. So, uh, hands up here who thinks I should be in Italy. <laughs> A couple of hands have gone up, thank you. Uh, hands up who, who has no idea why sh I should be in Italy. <laughs> the vast majority. Good. Uh, so, uh, my brother, my younger brother this afternoon, uh, has his first home game in charge of the Itali Italian national rugby team. Okay, and they face uh, the best team in the world, who were fantastically beaten by the second best team in the world last week. Um, so, uh, and my other brother is over in Italy uh, at that game. Uh, I will be leaving the question and answer session early uh, to go and join my parents to watch the build up and the game. Um, and this uh, patient and doctor and uh, healthcare professional group are on a journey. Uh, and we're on a journey that Dermot will talk about later on to be a European center of excellence. Um, delivering uh, the best care uh, for uh, a relatively rare uh, tumor group. Uh, you are a critical part of that journey, and this group is a critical part of that journey. And the parallels in what I've been involved with in, in this group, and Connor's journey, uh, who, who's my brother, uh, in international rugby uh, are kind of similar, so I'm just going to tell the story briefly, okay? Uh, about 10 years ago, uh, Tommy Gorman started hassling, actually, uh, but no, about 10 years ago, uh, Le Leinster were playing Harlequins in the quarterfinal of a game of rugby, and uh, and there'll be lots of people who have no interest in rugby. This is not about rugby. Just listen to the sequence of events. Uh, last minute of the game, uh, Harlequin's kicker uh, has been substituted, but Harlequin's get a penalty to win the match. They need their kicker back on. Uh, a winger is given a blood capsule, bites the blood capsule, and starts bleeding from the corner of his mouth and leaves the pitch. Harlequins bring back on their kicker, who then uh, misses the kick, as it happens. So Harlequins lose the match. The Leinster doctor says, uh, that didn't look right. Uh, I want to see the winger's uh, lip. Uh, the physiotherapist says, uh, for Harlequins, uh, is in the changing room and cuts the winger's lip, okay? First rule of medicine is do no harm. Uh, and the story unfolds and it is, uh, uh, you know, it is called for what it is. Uh, the Harlequin's manager is sacked uh, and banned for a number of years. Uh, the physiotherapist is struck off uh, and uh, a phone, Connor gets a phone call the following week uh, will you take over this club? And everyone says, no, uh, don't do that. They're in the doldrums. Uh, Connor knows rugby and had been working in the academy uh, in England and knew the talent coming through in Harlequins, actually. And he said, whoever takes that job, if they do a good job, is going to look very good. So he said, I'll take the job. But he went in. And he did a big analysis of the culture in a Harlequin's rugby club. Uh, you know, how, how could that happen? Uh, and what he found was a lack of discipline, a lack of respect. Uh, the people selling the tickets, rugby was professional about 10 years at the time. People selling the tickets for the games and promoting the matches didn't know the players. The players weren't in talking to them about the games. Uh, the players, when they were out training, would take their kit bags and, and throw them to the side of the pitch and their water bottles and go back in after training because that was Kitman's job. 
um, to pick up the kicking tees and tidy up after they were the players. Um, and when he asked the ticket sellers, uh, match promoters, what's your job? Uh, they said, I used to sell tickets. Uh, kit managed to tidy up. Uh, and he was saying, well, what do you really want? Uh, well, to sell more tickets. Um, and th there was no common goal, no shared uh, vision. And uh, he, what he did when he came in was he introduced, uh, well, a common goal. We want to be the best uh, rugby team in the country. Harlequins had never been that. Um, and he was, you know, he reads all these sports psychology books, you know, like he, uh, like he, he put Padraig Harrington to shame in terms of the amount of reading he'd do about sports psychology, but uh, he, he talked about one where John F. Kennedy, uh, a, a, uh, it's hard to talk about American presidents and not have your heart sink at the moment, but uh, John F. Kennedy, when he visited Cape Canaveral, uh, in the 1960s and asked one of the porters, janitors, you know, what's your job? And the answer was, uh, my job, Mr. President, is to help put a man on the moon, not clean a toilet. Uh, so he wanted a common vision uh, and he wanted an attitude and a, of mutual respect in Harlequin's rugby club. So he introduced a kind of a discipline, not minor disciplinary thing. So the players picked up their water, their kicking tees and their water bottles after training sessions. Uh, they, um, you know, didn't park in the disabled car park spaces on training days. Uh, they parked in the car park spaces they were meant to park in. And if they didn't, there was a 10 euro fine or 10 pound fine and it went to a local charity at the end of the month. And for the first few months, there was quite a lot of money going to the local charity. And then it stopped uh, because people were doing things better. Um, and what happened as discipline off the pitch improved is that discipline on the pitch improved. So uh, if you're not kind of breaking the rules off the pitch, then you carry that onto the pitch. And the big thing that happened in his first season was that the penalty count, Harlequins had always been giving away loads of penalties, uh, fell to their lowest ever. And that season uh, they finished higher than they'd finished for the previous few seasons. And uh, two seasons later, uh, with young talent, uh, they went on and won the premiership uh, for the first time in the, in the club's history. Uh, and he's now moved uh, over to Italy, uh, loving it. Uh, he decided he would position himself midway between the two main clubs in Italy, Treviso and Zebra. So if you draw a line between Treviso and Zebra and you go to the midpoint, it's Lake Garda. Life is tough, you know. Uh, so he's now on Lake Garda uh, and mastering Italian and uh, basically when he was offered the Italian job, uh, everyone said, Mm, don't do not do that, they're in the doldrums. Um, and he looked at the talent coming through and he said, well actually, whoever takes that job, if they do a good job, is going to look pretty good. Uh, so he's very excited uh, about the next few years. I um, think he could have done without the All Blacks beating Ireland uh, last week or Ireland beating the All Blacks last week because they're now wounded All Blacks. Uh, but he has done what he, he does. He, he contacted the uh, uh, New Zealand coaching team and said, look, we want to get as much as we can out of this week. Uh, can we, my coaching team, have dinner with your coaching team? Uh, so that was Thursday night. Uh, last night he met with my brother for a drink before the game. I would like to have been there. Um, and today I have no doubt they will be pasted. Uh, but it's about process, it's about doing their best. So shared vision, mutual respect, uh, and everybody participating. The rules are uh, equally applicable to what we are after here. Uh, while Connor was with Harlequins, uh, they lost uh, two players, uh, one through meningitis, 
one through suicide. Uh, they used that positively. Uh, we have lost people in the last year here uh, that are not here. Uh, we must use that positively and we must go forward to be what we want to be, which is a European Centre of Excellence. We're en route to that. Uh, unthinkable when uh, Tommy first started hassling uh, 10 years ago. Uh, and everybody in the room is a critical part of that, uh, but you are the most critical part of it. And, and this day uh, is growing, uh, and with it the momentum is growing. Uh, so uh, it's the best kind of relationship. Uh, we need you, you need us, and, and you know we build. So will I pass over to Justin directly? for the surgeon's bit. As I say, I don't do opening addresses. Uh, you will excuse me leaving at about half twelve to join my 86-year-old father and my 80-year-old mother to watch the build-up. Uh, I'll be watching them, wondering where their hearts are going to be uh, at kick-off time. Uh, but mine will be racing. Thank you very much.